I'm sitting in the northwestern corner of the Grand Refectory. From here I can show you the whole space. It's a huge, huge hall, one of the biggest uh, refectory or feast halls in the whole uh, medieval Europe. The, the dimensions are 15 by 30 feet and almost 10 meters in the highest point. So for our US friends who are still using Imperial, that's 50 by 100 feet and over 30 feet at the highest point. The vaulted ceiling you see here is a tricky one because yes, it is a ripped Gothic ceiling but it has a very un unusual name in Polish which translates to triple support ceiling mm, the original Polish name is Trójdzielne Trójpodporowe which means basically what I said before there are different names like uh, mm, that it is a type of Lyran ceiling and I found even a uh, scientific paper that calls it pseudo polygon. But beyond the ceiling, you can see that yes, it is a Gothic space because of the windows here. Not entirely lancet windows, but you can see clearly the Gothic arches. Windows on the eastern wall are higher up so you can see there's a space mm, that they almost look like a cluster window but windows on the western wall are basically at n starting at knee height and are as high as the other ones <coughs> what you just heard was children playing with the covers of the heating system which I will show up in a different uh, video. The factory is propped upon three pillars. This is the northernmost. As you can see, the base is covered in carvings of leaf work and faces. Those faces are usually called grotesques or mascarons, depending on where they're placed. I prefer to use the term mascaron uh, in Polish, mascaron for all of them. You can see the pillar here, along with the top part, which is called a uh, capital head of the column. You can see it's intricately carved in biblical scenes. I'm going to try to show you some of them. It may seem pretty boring, but as you can see, it has also intricate scroll work at the base. You can see here our B tree and quadriform leaf work that looks basically like parts of a window gothic window as you can see but the pillar also has some intricate scroll work up there this is mostly plant motifs this pillar also carved in faces only faces, so we have a lot of mascots here, but also there is a scene up there on the capital. And if you look closely, you can see what kind of scene it is. This is basically a feast. You can see people dancing, you can see people playing music and carrying foodstuffs. So, this capital shows what this place was used for. This is a feast hall. The most impressive feast hall in all of Europe in the 1400s. There are spaces where you can see the old glory of the castle in bits and pieces. Like this part here, where you can see 
uncover the colors and patterns that cover the whole walls of the granary factory and those colors were well in the medieval times uh, pretty eye-pokingly contrast based because the as the more vibrant and uh, screaming color was the more expensive it was and thus the more power and wealth was shown by having the walls painted in the color that will be continued in the grandmaster chamber but i want to show you two more ancient medieval pieces of wood color this is the painting above the entrance because this is where the Virgin Mary was placed in, in the marble castle most of the time. This is a painting from the mid 14th century so pretty old it was rest restored twice but most of what we see is still the original pattern and color scheme. Why here? Mostly because this shows both the fact that the Teutonic Knights are her knights and as such basically the second most important or if you count them all the fourth most important person in Christian mythology is standing behind them but also it is to show that they are the knights of the of the church and well if you raise your hand at the knights of the church you raise your hand at her and thus at the whole church a piece of history not as easily recognized but you could see if you look close enough this is a boss which is basically a small plaque on a capstone this one is the only one that was that is left from the original medieval decoration of the ceiling. It shows the family, the holy family, running away to Egypt to uh, avoid uh, Herod's uh, pogrom of children. This is a symbolic piece because, well, the Teutonic Knights also had to run from the Holy Land. So they used this motif to symbolically connect their history to the supposed history of the uh, Holy Family. I've noticed those here in the window uh, glyph. This space was reserved during the second scientific restoration to show the benefactors of the first neo-gothic or romantic restoration so cities and other uh, benefactors were honored here originally those signs were those were placed here at, on the windows as stained glass but during the second scientific restoration they were replaced by a motif showing the uh, ancient and modern uh, heroic warriors so the benefactors were moved over here not only the wealthiest families and cities sponsored the reconstruction during the romantic era as you can see smaller regions like mine the Das Große Marienwerder are currently Wielkie Żuławy also took part in the public uh, fun gathering for, for the reconstruction. Probably wondered what those supposedly impressive paintings are. And these, well, these are nationalist propaganda from the start of the 20th century. Basically, the Kaiser, the German uh, ruler, decided to show that well even the Teutonic Knights were Germans and everything they did was German and especially if you pay attention to the paintings 
that the Germans always played the first uh, first role here. They were always in the forefront. So as you can see, well, yes, there is a Teutonic Knight, but he's probably dying or dead. And the uh, uh, German ruler here, as you can see by the crown, and his uh, shield is on the forefront of the scene here. This supposedly shows the first great battle uh, by the Teutonic Order, first great one battle by the river Jezgon or Sirguna. Uh, it's, it was supposed to break the uh, initial resistance of the Prussian people to Teutonic invasion. The second painting, slightly obscured by this impressive throne, more of that later, is showing the uh, German princess, of course, sponsoring boats that brought even more Teutonic Knights to Prussia. And this also symbolizes the founding of the city of Elbog, which was the main port of the Teutonic Order for a long time. And here we see the third painting showing relief for the um, for the important castle of Bahoga, which was halfway between Marburg and uh, Königsberg, Królewitz in Polish. So, as you can see, who is um, uh, doing the relief part? Of course, a German ruler. The third painting shows the Bohemian or Czech king Przemysl Otokar II, or for our English speaking people who don't want to break their tongues, King Otokar II, uh, founding the city of Königsberg. Founding is a well high handed way of uh, saying it. He basically took part in a crusade. And after his uh, warriors helped the Teutonic Knights to uh, basically conquer that part of Prussia, they founded a castle there and it was built into a large city named in his honor. The fourth scene here shows the Teutonic Knights in the background <laughs> and of course the German uh, rulers calling the last Prussian uprising and basically cementing the Teutonic rule in Prussia. This ended really badly for the Prussians. What was left of them? We have something like 300 words of their language left most of them names of families and places. So they were basically militarily and culturally genocided by the Teutonic Knights. Yes, the order was not a very nice organization. They wanted land, so they took it. So as you can see, colonization isn't new to, uh, to the history of the world. It isn't especially anything that was started during the, colon the, the, the era of the great discoveries. The sixth and last painting, well, this shows you the nationalistic propaganda in its own glory. You can see here cementing of the order's rule in Prussia. The Holy Roman Emperor handing the Grandmaster, a golden bowl. Well, it was bowl because uh, the same was uh, previously handed to the Grandmaster by the Pope, and they basically said the same: whatever you manage to conquer belongs to you, and nobody in the Christian lands can uh, can uh, conquer those uh, co counter those claims. And as the name suggests, it was Bo. They basically were granted land that they never had any rights to, but 
that's how it works. Now for the noisiest part of the grinder factory, which you might have heard in the other videos. So, this is the heating system, or at least covers of the heating system. Hippocaustum is an ancient model of a furnace consisting of the main furnace chamber where you burn, burn wood and the upper chamber that houses the rocks, mostly basalt and granite uh, pieces that uh, let it function. So heating those rocks you create a whole reservoir of heat and when they're heated properly you quench the furnace down there and then raise those covers so that the heated air can raise and make this place warm enough to be used in winter during the scientific restoration this whole space was renovated and they tested the heating system it appeared that after one session of heating the rocks they were enough to provide this place with basically room temperature for a few hours oh, this is going to be a loud video as you can hear the stairs here are wooden it's down here I'm not going to fully go inside just enough to show you the size of the place you can see there's a lower furnace where the wood was burned and the upper furnace chamber where the stones are placed this is what heated the main refectory above 